What's up everybody? So my name is Russ. Website is rwgresearch.com. I currently have been asked to do a demonstration of the oscilloscope that I have purchased. A um, guy by the name of George, also known as HH, oh, excuse me, HGG2013. Um, they have been discussing the best oscilloscope for a certain price range, and uh, this is one of the oscilloscopes. This is a uh, UDT. This model is a 2102CM, 20 megahertz, 1 gigahertz sampling rate. Um, so currently, I'm just going to give a general overview of this uh, oscilloscope and just try to get some more information out there on the internet. I guess uh, there just isn't much out there. I'm going to try to go through all the menus and give you all the options and show you what is available on the menu for this oscilloscope. And um, currently, um, I also have a Regal DG1022 uh, 20 megahertz signal generator that I'll be testing the uh, waveforms per second to my uh, best of my abilities. Now, um, originally I didn't want to do this video because I'm not really an expert at uh, giving uh, demonstrations of different pieces of equipment, but uh, since there isn't really any information out there, this at least will be helpful. So if I do make a mistake or say something that isn't right, it's probably just because <clears throat> I'm not quite aware. So take this video with just a, uh, a grain of salt to give you a little bit more demonstration. Um, this oscilloscope does come with a PC software that um, you can actually replicate exactly what you see right here. It has the screen and all the buttons, knobs, and functions. Um, I'll give you a short demonstration of that, but unfortunately, um, it slows everything down when it's communicating with the PC so just keep that in mind when I get to that later um, so let's just get started first of all um, this oscilloscope does come with uh, two regular um, probes these are times one times ten I haven't had a problem with these these work pretty well I originally bought this oscilloscope because I wanted to track down uh, transients in certain signals that I was trying to find. Um, currently I haven't really got to that point. I haven't really done those type of tests. So again, this is just a uh, general information video. So the front of it, let's give you a quick shot. Um, I'm going to adjust the uh, stuff on my camera so we can see the screen better. But currently I'll just give you a overview of the buttons that we have here. and the outputs. It does have an external trigger on the front there and then there is actually a pass fail output. I'm not 100% on how that works but the back side there is a USB and a pass fail out. You've got an on off switch and a power port. This model doesn't have the uh, networking capabilities. <clears throat> nice handle on it, easy carry. Um, that actually works pretty well. The feet actually do fold down so you can set different angles. I believe you can even set these halfway like that and get a little bit higher angle. It's got a USB port in the front and a um, power button over here. Show you what it looks like when you turn it on. Now I did, when I read the reviews on this, oh by the way if you look at my thumb, no I didn't paint my nail. I smashed my finger. Just keep that in mind. Yuck. Anyway, <clears throat> this uh, review on this, when I originally was looking it up, people were complaining about the fan noise. Um, so here, I'll let you listen to the fan noise. I don't hear much difference. Um, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't even know it's on. The background noise most of the time is louder than the oscilloscope, so I'm not sure what they were complaining about. Anyway, um, so I guess I'll just go through the menus and show you what we've got. I'm going to actually zoom in on the screen itself and uh, hopefully that's good enough. You guys can see enough to make this worth your time. I am going to adjust the settings here. I hope this doesn't screw up everything, but it's going to get darker. It is usually a little bit lighter. You can't even see the uh, background increments anymore but they are there 
So hopefully you can see this good enough. And uh, we'll go ahead and just go through the menu to the best of my abilities. So you've got the menu on and off. That just turns the menu on and off. Now, a lot of people were concerned about the, the screen. Yeah, this is all you get. This blank spot is always here, and the measurements are always here, and the stuff on the top is always there. The uh, screen size itself that you actually get to see the oscilloscope is roughly uh, what's that about 135 millimeters or so 135 millimeters cross diagonal which to be honest it's got a pretty good nice crisp cr cr clear screen on it um, there's enough viewing angle there I'm not really concerned so let's go ahead and go through some of the menu um, Okay, let's go to the measure. Actually, I'm going to hook up the uh, hook up the signal generator really quickly, just so that we have a signal going. Should have done that ahead of time, huh? Alrighty. So we can actually see some of the measurements this way. Got it on times one probe. And uh, let's set this at uh, 500 kilohertz. Okay. So there's 500 kilohertz. Um. So let's just go some of the menus. So you've got measure, got measure all. Um, I actually had this in, under acquire. There's this fast acquire, and uh, it actually allows for the frame rate to be higher. If I go to the help, I'll show you exactly what it does. It says uh, captures and displays the time amplitude information of a signal by upper waveform capture rate. Um, I have to actually turn that off in order to get the measurements to work right. So that's new to me. Um, so here if you go to measure all it will actually display all of the measurements all at once on the screen. Again the screen looks really funny I think that's because of my uh, just my camera frame rate and stuff. Anyway, it pops up as uh, all of these stuff, and then if you go to custom, you can actually select what you want. And actually, as you scroll through these, these are actually uh, live. So if I go to frequency and I change my frequency, it, it will actually change. So you can look at those things live, which is kind of nice. So that's another way of doing it. Now, if you select one of them, it will actually dump it on the screen here. You can only have up to four on the screen. And I think if you close the menu, then it puts it over here on this side. All right, so uh, we'll clear that out. So that's all custom. Um, you can set up different parameters. I haven't really messed with that, so I don't know. But you've got close parameter one, two, three, and four. If you hit clear, it clears it. Um, you've also got a, another menu here, um, the delay, or you can do a phase. I haven't messed with those. Alright, so you've also got cursor option. That's the measure menu. You go to the cursor, and uh, you can do time, amplitude, or off. So again, you can do manual adjustments here. You can select the uh, both you can adjust them one at a time these buttons really quickly I'll show you these buttons are push so put you select the menu and you scroll what you want and then you just push it in and select it and then that actually runs your menu option whatever you have selected on your screen as well so this button does a whole bunch of different stuff and all of these buttons actually do the same thing um, there is also a, a very cool function that I like right here on the scale that allows you to pull up a, a, a an overview 
and actually a close-up shot. So that's kind of kind of unique, kind of nice to have. Let me zoom back in on the menu here on the screen. Okay, so the cursor, uh, you can also select it as independent or tracking, so it moves together. You've got base and percent. Okay, again, I haven't messed with some of this stuff. I haven't used this scope a whole terribly lot uh, lately, so got to kind of refresh my memory. Alright, so if we go to the display, you can do uh, this type of display. Let me turn off the uh, turn off the cursor here. Alright, um, so if we go to uh, display, I believe that's the same thing as this menu. I'm not sure. Type XY or TY, I don't know. Vector or dots. That's kind of nice, actually. You can do a full grid. Crosshairs. Just a frame, whatever you'd like. Um, this is actually the time of which it's shown. So if I change the frequency, you'll see it overlaps which is kind of nice. You can do, uh, that was short, this is long. Again, I'm just changing the frequency and it's it's refreshing at a, a very slow <clears throat> rate as far as the uh, time delay on when the screen actually goes back to its original. Anyway, then you got unlimited. Put it back on auto. You've got waveform intensity so basically uh, the intensity of the waveform itself put that back at about <clears throat> 80 percent or so so that's all of the display now the acquire you've got uh, different types of settings here peak average and normal the peak from what I understand is pretty handy when you're trying to see something that is very sporadic We'll keep it on normal. You've got equivalent or real time. Um, I'm not 100% sure what some of these functions do, but I've been playing with them, trying to get the frame weight, frame rate uh, to show up correctly. It's kind of interesting. And you've got your memory depth, and you've got your fast acquire, which really does some some very different stuff when you're trying to look up different signals. Sometimes you have a bunch of glitches. You can change that, and it all smooths out. All right, so you've got. Um, let's go to storage real quick. You can do bitmap, wave reference, and I uh, do not have a flash drive in here currently. But you just stick a, a thumb drive in right here on the front, and that's how you save the bitmaps and all your other stuff. So if we do go to setup. Save, load, report, or uh, import, export, and again, I don't have I don't have all the the USB in there. The bitmap is really handy for me <clears throat> because uh, I can just uh, if I want to capture something on the screen, I just hit that, hit OK, label it, and it just writes a file directly to the flash drive. All right, so utility, you got system configuration, self-adjust, uh, version information, clear info. RTC config. Uh, in that menu, you've got the uh, time and date. Go back to utility um, and system. Next, you've got reset and contrast. This is the contrast is kind of cool. This thing will literally go down to where you can't even see it, but it's still on. So contrast options are really nice. If you work in a very dark laboratory, you can set this thing down to 1% and you can probably work great in the pitch black actually. Um, so that's most of system config, I believe. Yep. So we'll go back into the uh, GUI config. You've got your language select. And then you've got uh, 
classic. Uh, you can hit the button here as well. If you hit the button, it'll select a different option. Then all you gotta do is hit the uh, button over here to actually activate it. Or you can use the turn, the turn dial. Just kind of a quick note. So here's the different settings. Now you've got classic, which is what I'm in. Um, traditional, which I don't really care for. And then you've got modern, which is what I normally use, but it doesn't show up very well on my camera. So normally I use this. I, I like the way this looks. So we'll bring it back to, to classic, just so you can actually see what's going on. Then you've got menu display. This is, I believe, the time and seconds it'll take for the menu to go away. Otherwise, you just hit the menu button, it'll go away. I'll leave it on manual, because when I'm doing measure, it'll go away, and I don't like that. Um, grid brightness, you can actually adjust. Now you can actually see the grid better, but I had it down pretty low, because I like it low. But the grid is there right now. It's just that I've got the brightness turned down pretty far. Okay, so that's uh, the GUI config. Now you've got this pass fail. Here's your options in the pass fail. I don't understand the pass fail. I don't know what it is and all thing about it. But if you want to see the settings, there they are. Bunch of different options and settings in here. But uh, I don't I haven't used it and I don't know what it is. So if I go to recorder, this is pretty nice. If I just hit record. Um, no record it. Oh, I have to hit record. Now it says uh, record function is invalid when dual time base average envelope scan is on. Press menu on off to continue. Alright, so it's recording now. You can see the recording up on the top screen. If I uh, adjust the frequency, uh, if I adjust square wave, different stuff, noise, alright, and then I hit the stop button. I can actually come back up here and hit play. And I can actually, it'll run through it on its own. It's running through it right now all by itself. Okay, but if I wanted to go through it manually, it's got these replay numbers up here. Okay, I can actually scroll through those numbers. Okay, using, using this button right here, this knob. I can actually scroll through the different uh, positions. And actually see, there I just switched the signal. Now I'm not sure what all I can do after I record something like this. Maybe I can go to measure. Yeah, it looks like I, I can go to measure. And it still functions the same. So, back to recorder and hit play again. So that's, that's actually really handy. Um, that way you can go back and track exactly what you did. I don't know if there's an output function on this. I'm not quite sure. There might be a way to save this file underneath the uh, other options. But so we'll go back. We'll go back and hit the run here. Uh, you'll see utility recorder stop. Go back to real live run mode here. All right. <clears throat> we'll go back. Next, you've got, uh, oh, I have no idea what that is. Oh, that's the frequency counter up there. Uh, auto set. Okay. So if we go to, um, let's see, storage. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how that functions, but I, I don't, from what I remember, I don't know if there's a way that you can export the recording I'm really not for sure so you'll have to look that one up yourself I guess so that's pretty much all of the menus um, let's see you do have a math menu um, you can calculate different things I actually haven't messed with this at all but you can do different uh, I'll just go through the menus real quick so you can see what's in here. Now, one really cool function of this oscilloscope is if you hit the help button and you hit any option, uh, it tells you everything. It's all built in, which is extremely nice. And you just hit the help and it'll go away. So if you wanted to see what the, one of these options did, you just hit help. 
Oh well, okay. But if we go to um, utility and go to no, let's go to storage and go here. If I hit help, it tells me exactly what each option is. Pretty nice, actually. That function has helped me out tremendously. You don't have to grab the book and look at it. Kind of nice. Um, so we've also got the trigger menu. This is the trigger menu. We turn the math off. You got a reference also, A and B, which waveform you're referencing. And you do have again two channels. Um, let's go to the menu on the trigger. You've got edge, slope, video, pulse. Which channel you want? External, external five, AC line, alter. Alter's kind of cool. Put it back on channel one. Um, volts per division. That changes the uh, course are fine. I don't really mess with that. Probe setting. Um, invert, on or off. Bias, volume, not sure, haven't messed with that. Uh, let's see. I guess that's about it. Uh, I go back to the trigger menu. There we go. I was in the wrong menu. Alright, so there's all of your your edge trigger, you've got the coupling I may have been in the wrong menu anyway, uh, you've got DC, AC a couple other options and you've got your mode, single, normal, auto the single has helped me out a lot it'll basically trigger on the first trigger it sees and it'll just stay on the screen and we can try it I'm actually going to turn off the output and hit the single and just turn on my output, boom so it actually stopped and captured the first trigger when I turned on my uh, my uh, frequency generator. It actually stopped exactly when it saw the first trigger. And then you can also measure and stuff. That has helped me out a lot, trying to capture a very short, quick pulse on a system. Uh, I really like that. Um, Alright, so back to the trigger menu. Then you've got rays. There's some controversy on the rays fall. Um, the rise fall and the uh, the options here on the slope. Um, you guys are with the forums kind of talking about that. I'll show you later what I think. I think it's actually both because here it's not triggering right. But if I go to uh, acquire and turn this on, I get a steady signal now. This this fast acquire is a huge difference um, in, in in what's going on. Alright, so we'll go back to the trigger menu. I'm going to set this up to what we want. We're going to go put it on normal. I'm going to leave that on AC, rise, fall, edge triggering. Okay, really quickly, let's go to the channel menu. You've got different options for the, for the channel menus here. Oh, there's your quest. What the options were earlier? I was in the wrong setting earlier. Next, invert. Okay, so that's where the uh, channel settings are. Um, I believe that's most of it. Um, let's see if I go to trigger. There is some uh, functions that I have not even messed with. One of the functions I really do like, though, is this uh, being able to get in here. Oh, there's a, a horizontal menu, too. Window. Zoom. That's all there is in there. And uh, the hold. I think I've hit them all. Let's go back here and turn this back on so we're steady. Okay, now let me set up the test and I will try to capture um, a guy by the name of... Let's see, his name was... Mark. Over at the forums also known as M-A-R-M-A-D. He has set up a very simple test to find out the uh, 
waveform capture rate. Now supposedly this has 150,000 capture rate. Um, honestly, I'm going to set up this test and try to do it my best, but you have to decide whether it's accurate. Oh, really quickly, we've got 50 seconds intervals all the way down to... all the way down to uh, two nanoseconds I believe it's a pretty wide range um, the scaling we can go from 10 volts down to 10 millivolts okay so let me get everything set up here and uh, we'll do the uh, the tests on the waveform capture rate. Alright, so uh, <clears throat> one more thing I wouldn't wanted to add on here that I forgot to tell is that you cannot change the trace color which kind of drives me crazy but it doesn't really matter. You have two channels they're both different colors so it doesn't really matter. Um, it is, channel 2 is yellow and uh, the other channel is like a aqua color. Um, the other thing was the viewing angle. In case you were curious, um, the viewing angle is pretty darn good. You can see now the screen is very glossy, but I've never had a problem with that. But in case you wanted to see the viewing angle, it's fairly decent. All right, so there you go. I think I've covered pretty much everything. All righty. So uh, currently, I have this uh, system all set up to the tests. Supposedly, this is a way to check the uh, frame rate or the uh, waveform capture rate of a DSO. Actually, it seems to work fairly decent. But uh, you guys have to make up your own mind if it's accurate. So really quickly, the trigger menu. I've got this on rise, fall. I've got this on normal mode. It's on AC coupling because I'm going to be using AC. I don't really know the exact functions of all the different options of the way it's coupled, but that's what I'm going to be using. You've got edge triggering, and channel one is the source. Now again, I'm going to open up this uh, acquire menu because this is where I find it uh, useful to switch around some stuff to get the higher frame rate captures. So right now it's on fast ACQ and I'm at 1 hertz on my signal generator. I am using a, uh, a Regal DG1022. Okay, This thing functions fairly well had it for a while all right so here we go the first test is supposedly a square wave between 1 and 12 Hertz currently I'm at 2 Hertz 3 4 5 6 okay so it stables out at 6 so there's the original test you guys were talking about whether or not this is even supposed to function right with this test it is stable I think that's what you guys were looking for 7 Hertz it's still stable even if I turn fast uh, acquire on and off it's still fine it still works goes a little fuzzy with the deep memory so uh, we'll keep going 8 9, I'll go back down to 8, 8 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, and we're starting to see some flickering, okay I'll go up and that's 9, the frequency counter on the screen right now at low frequencies doesn't seem to be very accurate, but if I bring the time base out
it's usually pretty darn close. So I don't really know. At higher frequencies it's dead on, but at lower frequencies it's really kind of off. And I'm not sure why. So that's 9 hertz, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Then we're starting to see our whole wave there. Alright, so I'm going to put this on a sine wave and I'm going to do my best to demonstrate the uh, same results that you guys are looking for. Capture rate. Right now I'm at 8 hertz. I'm not going to tell you what volts per div, you're just going to have to look. And uh, the reason for that is because I seem to say them wrong all the time. So I'd rather you just look at it and make sure it's what you think it is. Okay, so let's get started on this one. We're just going to bring it up until we start to see that double, double edge. It's 9 hertz. I'm going to go ahead and switch this down to the uh, smaller range here. And see what we can get. So there we're, we're stabled out. We're in that dead zone. Currently at uh, 16 hertz, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So I don't know. Uh, don't know what that tells you. Okay, so here we go. Look at the volts for div. We're at 27 hertz. I'm going to bring it up slowly, one hertz at a time. So there we're dropped out. So we're looking for that edge to reappear. And there it is. 30, uh, it's at 34 hertz on my signal gen. So we'll go to the next one. Alright, I'm just going to slowly, slowly uh, bring the frequency generator up until we see it drop out. Okay, there it dropped out. And looking for it to reappear. There it is. So that's at... Uh, 84 hertz on my uh, signal generator. Alright, so when I originally did this test, my frequency up here was actually almost exactly the same as, uh, as my frequency generator output, but for some reason right now it's a little off, so just listen to what I'm telling you. It's at 84 hertz on my frequency gen. Again, if I bring this scale out, you'll see the frequency is almost dead on. But for some reason, there it's exact, well, it was jumped around, but I'm really not for sure why it's doing that. All right, so let's go to the next time base. Again, I'm just going to raise this frequency till we till we get to what we see. There it dropped off. Now, when we get to these higher frequencies, it really starts flickering pretty bad once it comes back in. And once it comes back in, like there it's flickering. So there it came back in at 208. Okay, and if I go higher, start flickering again. But the first time I see it here is at 208 hertz. Right there. 
so we're at 211 hertz on my signal gen and we'll go to the next one next time base Let's see this one was around oh, whoa get back over in my easy menu here I'm just doing this by hand I've got the sweep function set up but the first bit is pretty easy there it just dropped off and there it reappeared let's bring it back down there's flickering so right there 473 Hertz on my uh, signal gen see now we're almost dead on accurate so I'm not sure what the deal is there but oh well keep going next time base this one's pretty high I've got these on my pictures I took that I sent George posted on the forums See, I want to jump up pretty fast here. Okay. Dropped out. Looking for it to come back. Okay, so there it is. And I'm going to wait till it's solid, which is right there. It's 921 hertz. The screen is accurate. Just for curiosity, I'm going to keep going here a little bit higher and see if we can see it flicker. There, see it's flickering again. Now it's back again. I'm not sure what that tells you. But I believe where it drops out completely here is what you're looking for. Alright, so next time base. Um... Let's see, this one's pretty high. I'm going to put this on sweep. And we'll sweep to 2 kilohertz starting at uh, 1 kilohertz. Slow this down a little bit. 10 seconds. So about 1.3, 1.5. So we'll just go back and turn off sweep and set this at what we're looking at. 1.3 to 1.5. So there it dropped off. And this is where it gets a little tricky. It's kind of hard to find. They were all smooth. And there it dropped off. There it flickered. There, now it's solid. 1.73 kilohertz. Now if I keep going, it's just on off flickering, on off flickering. There's that really fast flickering. And then if I bring it up to where we actually get a solid line back there we get actually a solid back and it's relatively close to the same brightness so that's right around 2.5 kilohertz that's 2.5 2.53 kilohertz right there on that time base. So we'll go to the next one. Now this is, let's see, I uh, know we got more to go through because I can see these. I know where this one's at. We'll just scroll up. There we're flickering. There it disappeared. 
circle back down until we get a solid still flickering there there's solid that's uh three three kilohertz now I'm gonna keep going because what's strange is everything keeps flickering for a while up until we get to about five see there it's totally gone there it's back there it's gone there it's back until we get to about five kilohertz it's not solid so I really think this is like dead time I don't know so there we're now we're getting our regular flickering I don't know, maybe that was right. I don't know. I think that was right. I was looking at the wrong one. On 10, oh, it's 5. Oh, that is right. Now, just for you to take a look at, at right about 5 kilohertz, it's actually steady now. Now, let me put it on sweep from... Uh, Oh, uh, we'll just start it. Let's start at two and go to six. Now watch what happens. A lot of flickering all the way through there. And once we hit five, it's steady again. So you you take judge on that. Let me go down a little bit slower. Put it at twenty seconds and watch what happens. This frequency on the screen is accurate. There it's flickering. 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 And when we get to about 5 kilohertz. Now we're steady. Alright, so take that as reference however you want to look at it. Let's go to the next time base. Still on the same sweep. I'm going to start at uh, 4 kilohertz and stop at 8. I'll go back to 10 seconds sweep. Let's see where we're at. There we're flickering, 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 still flickering. I think I need to go higher because I'm thinking it's around 9 kilohertz. So here's a sweep between 6 and 9. There's a lot of flickering going on there, so I don't know what that tells you. But let me turn off the sweep and actually go to the frequency I know which it is. Alright, so here we're at... Uh, there's that fast flickering. If I bring it back down, it totally disappears. So that's 7.6 6 kilohertz. 7 7.7, 7.8, 8.0, 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, 8.6, 8.7, 8.8, 8.9, and 9. Past 9, it's, uh, there it went away again. It's kind of sporadic. When I first did this test, it wasn't this sporadic, so I'm not sure what the deal is there. See, 9.6 is what I registered the very first time I did this. Let's go to the next one. This one was uh, 21 kilohertz last time I checked it, and it was accurate. I believe I'm looking at those right. So let's do a sweep here. Looks like it's cutting out around 11 kilohertz. Up 
popping back up around 13. It's actually 13.5. Let me get this set to zeros. So between 13.1. Now let me put this on a sweep so you can see what I'm looking at. It's kind of kind of confusing here. Go from nine to uh, fourteen. There's flickering, still flickering, still flickering. And it was still flickering. That's why I had it set so high. So let me let me sweep up to. Uh, 23 a lot of flickering going on and once it gets up to uh, there was about 20 let me start it at uh, 17 stop it at 24 see right about 20 it's stable now so that's what I was that's what I was reference referencing when I was looking at it. There it's actually There it got really bright. You see that? We're flickering, flickering, dim, dim, dim. Once we hit 21.9 kilohertz, it's actually the equal brightness as the other line. So that's what I was referencing as the correct spot. You can judge. I really don't know. All right, so this one looks like it's around 34 kilohertz. I'm just going to bring it up slowly. Again, I'm looking for that equal brightness. Flicker, flicker, flicker. There it kind of disappeared. Still flickering. Whoa, you see that little jump? Her refrigerator kick on over here. All right, so there it disappeared completely. So this is what you're looking for. Flickering, and now it's back on, steady. It's at 33. Now if I bring it up, it should actually be there, right there, between 34.1 and 34.2 kilohertz. I get a solid frequency. See how it's dimmer? Now it's solid. So that's what I'm that's what I'm guessing the right point is. So let's go up to the next one. This one's supposedly around 88 kilohertz. I'm gonna do a sweep from uh, 34 up to 94. We'll just put it at 40 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz. And you make up your mind where it's at. There it went away, it's flickering, and it came back on. Alright, so I'm going to narrow that. I'm going to narrow that between 80 and 100. All right, so let's do it manually. We'll go from we're at 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. Right there, 89.4. See the flickering and then the uh, the brightness. So that's what I'm suggesting the right point is. 
you can tell me if that's accurate. Let's go to the next one. After this next one, oh, I go back. There we go. After this next one, uh, something interesting happens, and I'm not sure what what's going on here. If it's out of my range or what. Now I know this one's is about 183, but as you can see, it's flickering. So I'll just start a sweep from uh, 80. 80 kilohertz up to 200 kilohertz. And just look what happens. A lot of flickering going on. But then, boom, right there, brightness. Did you see it? Full brightness, equal brightness. I was right around uh, 180. So we'll, we'll go back and do it manually. Start at, uh, start at 170. Right, 173, 174, 175, 176, 77, 78, 79, 82, 83, there, 83. So there's flickering and dim. That's at 182.8. 182.9, 183, 183.1, and there, 183.2 kilohertz. You can see it's equal brightness. So I'm going to say that is the correct point for this time base. Okay, so this is the last one I can actually get to register right. Anything past this uh, doesn't seem to work right. And I don't know why. I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to sweep from... Uh, 170 up to 500. Let's just go. I will leave it there for a second so you can see what it is. All right, I don't know if you saw that. Bring the stop down to about 300. There's flicker, 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 and there. It's about 230. So let's go back to manual. I'm bringing this back down to about 200. That's 216, 217, 218, 219, 220, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 9 and flickering still and we'll get there there it went solid so that's 238.9, kilohertz for that time base. That's officially the last one I can get to work right. Anything past that is either way out of my range or, or something. So just so you can see this. Here's the next time base. I'm just going to go ahead and sweep from... Uh, see here 200 oh let's see we'll start at uh, 200 kilohertz and stop at 600 kilohertz and it's like nothing happens let's bring the let's bring it up let's go to uh, 1 megahertz It should have been in there somewhere. I'm over it. So even if I even if I start it lower, even if I started at 10 kilohertz, 
I, I didn't see it anywhere down there either. I literally cannot find that flicker spot. I searched for quite some time. All right. I believe that's 50 nanoseconds. So let's go down to 20. Now here's where it gets interesting. When I get down to 20, I can't find anything in the uh, 50. And then in the 20, all I get is a bunch of flickering. Can't get it to stay steady at all. Um, so this is uh, 500 megahertz to, or sorry, 500 kilohertz to 1 megahertz. <clears throat> it's just flicker, 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 flicker. Um, and there, I turn the depth on, and I get a whole bunch of weird stuff. Maybe this, I don't know if this will help you or not. Probably not. So it's just a bunch of flickering. Now if I go to the next time base, now it steadies out. But I can't ever, I can't ever find the sweet spot that we're looking for. Even if I bring this up to, uh, Five megahertz. That start at fifty kilohertz and stop at five megahertz. I searched individual ranges and I can't find that sweet spot. So either this thing is truly that fast, or I just can't find it. Let's go up to. Uh, I'll just. Well, that's way too high. So start at uh, we're gonna start at one megahertz, and we're gonna stop at uh, ten megahertz. Now I've searched I've searched this stuff, and I just I can't find any flickering anywhere. And that that includes all of the next scales. So that's as small as I can go. Two nanoseconds. I believe I'm saying those right. I always get that stuff mixed up, so sorry guys. So we'll start at uh, 5 megahertz and stop at 10 megahertz. See if you see anything. I, I, I could not find anything yet. And I went through them very slow. Bring it up to 20 megahertz. As fast as I can get out of this thing. So, um, that's all I can give you. I, I cannot give you any more information because I don't have it. That's all I got. So let me set this back to auto brightness. There we go. Um, so there you go. That's that's the demonstration. Let me quickly show you what the uh, the screen looks like on the digital or the PC software. I really like it, but it doesn't really help. And from what I can find out, the storage um, or the uh, the recorder, when you record something, I don't think you can export it anywhere. It's just it's just stuck. You can only do it. I guess you can only do it that single time, and you can't save it. So I would have hoped you could have pulled that information off there and saved it, but I don't think you can. I haven't figured out a way to do it, and maybe there is a way to do it. All right, so let's look at the PC software. All right, so this is currently about the best I can do. I don't have a good screen capture program on this computer. Um, Basically, I've already opened it and told it that I want to connect to it via USB. I just hit connect. It says connect, and there it is. You can see how jumpy and slow it is. 
it also is just as jumpy and slow on the oscilloscope screen. But I do have the options here, so let's just hit record. Okay. So I am recording. I'm curious to see if the recording is even just as jumpy. I really don't know. I just have a sweep, I think, from 1 megahertz to 10 megahertz right now. Alright, so we'll hit stop. And we'll hit play. Look at that. Captured like some very funny stuff. Um. Okay, so now I'm going to just manually see. I'm actually I was always wondering if you could. Uh, well, I'm not quite sure. Oh well, stop. Anyway, like I said, it does have this software, but I'll be honest, it, uh, it's kind of slow. But, it works. So, if for some reason you wanted to monitor your oscilloscope, um, maybe logging into your PC somewhere remote, you could do it. But the functions all do work. You can actually just click and select versus uh, versus going through the menu with the scrolls. But anyway, that's the software. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, it's pretty long, but you know what? You want to see it? There it is. All right, Russ with RWGResearch.com. Have you guys a uh, good day, and uh, let me know if this is helpful. If anybody else wants me to demonstrate anything, let me know. I'll do my best to do so. And uh, that is the overview of the oscilloscope that I purchased. Thanks. See ya.